Ward Loop, a somewhat meta archetype in the PoE 3.17 League Arch Nemesis. Hi there, I'm Rakeser and in this video I'll explain all the mechanics behind Ward Loop builds in general and how you can calculate them for yourself. These are all the sections, once again everything is timestamped down below but I recommend that you watch everything. What is our goal? We want to cast as many level 21 spells as possible. We do that by taking damage ourselves through the Heartbound Loop as well as Forbidden Rite. The Heartbound Loop deals physical damage, so if you get any kind of armor or other physical mitigation, the build will not work. In some cases you can get percentage physical mitigation and have it still work, but you have to recalculate it yourself. Now, how the entire mechanic works. We have skeletons that die. They deal damage to us via the Heartbound Loop, and this triggers then a cast by damage taken setup, which casts a Forbidden Riot, which then deals even more damage to us. Combining both, we deal enough damage for level 21 cast when damage taken setups. To achieve the loop, we have to synchronize the skeleton duration to the cast when damage taken cooldown, and then a new loop can start. Before I forget to start the loop, we need two Essence of Insanity crafted one-hand weapons in our offhand. To then proc our loop, we swap to our offhand and back again. Yes, we have to use somewhat expensive anomalous summon skeletons. The reason behind this is that they can't be damaged for a certain amount of time. We want our skeletons to die precisely at the exact same time as the Casper damage taken cooldown is up. If our minions could be damaged in that time, they could die beforehand and then the loop would stop. If you really don't want to spend the Exalted Orb for the Anomalous Summon Skeletons, you can also use the Medium Cluster Jewel Notable Blessed Rebirth. What this does is, minions created recently cannot be damaged. This means that the skeletons also can't be damaged for 4 seconds. However, our minions can still die because their duration runs out, which is exactly what we want. So how do we reduce the skeleton duration enough? Skeletons have a base duration of 20 seconds. We want to reduce those 20 seconds to this amount for 0% cooldown recovery rate. We achieved that by getting 3 to dust jewels that have together 57% reduced minion duration. We also need an anomalous minion speed with 20 quality for another 40% reduced minion duration. Both together reduce the duration of the skeletons to 0.6 seconds. We then use a less duration gem to reduce the duration even further to the appropriate amount. For 9% CDR the numbers are a bit different, we need 1% more from the dust jewel and slightly different less duration gem. The same goes for the 27% CDR breakpoint, we still need 58% and the less duration gem with slightly more less duration. <laughs> Why these exact numbers, like the 264 milliseconds? Because the server uses ticks to calculate cooldowns and I think everything. So at 0% cooldown we hit the 264 millisecond tick, at 9% we hit the 231 millisecond tick and with 27% we hit the 198 millisecond tick. To sum everything up, we have minions that die at a specific time, which then procs a forbidden ride, and both together deal so much damage that we cast level 21 gems. Since we also have a setup to cast skeletons again, the loop will continue forever. Okay, so now we know the basic principle behind the loop and how to reduce the skeleton duration to the exact amount that we need. The next part we have to figure out is how to get exactly to 3580 damage, which is required for a level 21 Casper damage taken support. For that I made several examples. The relevant levels for the skeletons are level 11, because then we start spawning 3 skeletons, and level 21, because then the gem starts spawning 4 skeletons. Alright, so this is what I call the starter setup and also what I started out with and what you should probably start out with as well. So to calculate the damage that we take from our hardbound loops, if we have two rings with 420 damage taken each and we have level 11 skeletons then we spawn three skeletons that die. All of those combined means we take 2520 damage. Now the remaining 1060 damage has to come from Forbidden Rite. Forbidden Rite deals 40% of our max life as chaos damage to ourselves. Since the damage is chaos damage, it scales with chaos resistance. If we have minus 60 chaos resistance, we take 64% of our maximum life as chaos damage. So what that means is, if we have two hardbound loops and level 11 skeletons, we need to have at least 1657 life to proc level 21 chaos when damage taken gems. So an example setup would look like this, you have a level 1 to a maximum 16 cast by damage taken support, because we take 2500 from the hardbound loops, and level 16 is then the highest level that our cast by damage taken can be. 
So we have a level 16 castle damage taken linked to a maximum level 18 forbidden right and for example a curse. Our skeleton setup should be a level 5 castle damage taken plus level 11 summon skeletons and the right restoration support for your CDR breakpoint. Don't forget the 20 quality anomalous minion speed. All your other setups can then be level 21 castle damage takens with whatever spells you want. Here's another more costly example. For this one we need level 21 skeletons. So once again the hardbound loop then deals 1680 damage and the remaining 1900 has to come from forbidden right. So we need 2970 life. This frees up a, a ring slot in which you can for example use a onslaught ring. Once again this is what your skill setups would look like. If you have enough ward, this is what your loop will look like. First you will lose all your mana, but then the recoup kicks in and your mana will look fine. If you have way less ward, then the forbidden right deals damage, so for example now my forbidden right deals about 1900 damage, then this is what it looks like. Your life will tick down and you will run into mana problems. If we have way too little ward, then we can't start our loop because all our mana will get drained by the damage we take. Another thing you can do is use Divergent Caspian Damage Taken supports. The Divergent quality makes it so that you have to take 20% reduced damage. So instead of having to take 3580, we only have to take 2864 damage. We could then, for example, achieve this with a level 11 skeletons. So we take 1260 damage from the Heartbound Loop and another 1600 from the Forbidden Riot. So we would need 2500 life. And again, this is what your skill setups would look like. What you could also do is use Divergent Casper Damage Takens together with level 21 skeletons and two rings. You then take so much damage just from the minion death that you don't even need a Forbidden Ride anymore. This frees up a gem socket, which you can use for example, a sigil of power, an extra curse, another spell, anything. So your links could look something like this. A quick disclaimer, in the ward builds we usually use the skin of the loyal or skin of the lords to increase our global defenses. Both these chests have plus 1 or plus 2 to level of socketed gems. So when the cast damage taken is socketed in there, it also gets the increased level. So with the skin of the lords you don't need a level 21 but instead a level 19 gem and with the skin of the loyal you need a level 20 gem. This also means that in the last example you only need a level 19 divergent Casper damage taken for a main setup. The last thing we need to know is how we mitigate the damage that we take all the time, right? We use the All Roughs Resolve Flask, which has the line Ward does not break during flask effect. This means if whatever hit we take is less than our ward we have, we don't take any damage at all. This is why the archetype is called Ward Loop. Stacking ward should be pretty obvious, we just get ward on the helmet, the boots and the gloves and we use global defense items wherever we can. This means we use a chest, we might use a talisman with global defenses and we also use the staff mastery with 30% increased global defenses. So the last component of the build is to permanently sustain this flask. And we need to sustain this flask even without killing anything because in long boss fights for example we don't gain any charges. Now to permanently sustain flasks without killing anything, we will have to use the traitor keystone and the flask mastery, and the flask mastery utility flasks gain one charge every three seconds. If you are playing an ascendant, then you also pick the pathfinder node. Now here are just some quick examples how to sustain four flasks as an ascendant. You will need 100% flask charges gained and 90 to 100% flask effect duration depending on the quality on your all rough flask. To sustain 3 flasks for example you need 100% charges gained and this amount of duration or you get less charges gained but then more duration but you can figure that one out yourself. Now oh, I also quickly want to go over where we get all the flask charges gained and the flask effect duration. There's a bunch of flask charges gained down at the pathfinder as well as duration. Even more flask charges gained at the witch start. For the duration, we will need at least one cluster jewel and a good roll on a belt, for example. We can also gain 20% flash charges gained on a replica pure talent. If you're lucky, you also get flash charges from your Balbala jewel. To get a good Balbala jewel, you can just buy a bunch of them, test them and then resell them. The flask sustain part differs from build to build, which is why I didn't explain it in detail in this video. You will just have to check out the different build guides or figure that one out yourself.
I hope this video explained the vault looping mechanics well enough so that you can make your own build. Thanks for watching and see you again.